Composite Resins Clinical Technique So in the first part of this presentation, we talked about the historical aspect of composite resins, its classification and composition. So now composite resins is an extensive topic and it's also important from examination point of view. So we will cover it in parts. So the first part was the classification and composition. This is the second part where we will cover anterior composites and in the next part we will look at posterior composites. So talking about the clinical technique, how to restore carious tooth with composite resin. So first few steps are common for any type of composite restoration that is if you're doing an anterior or posterior so these steps are common for both so let's first take a look at those steps so the preliminary steps involve number one local anesthesia this is preferred in most patients as it reduces apprehension and salivation administering local anesthesia makes the patient relaxed and comfortable thus contributing to better operative dentistry especially while placing bonded restorations the next step is preparation of the operating site. So prior to beginning any composite restoration, it may be necessary to clean the operating site with a slurry of pumice to remove black biofilm and superficial stains. So this will create a clean operative site that is more receptive to bonding. Prophylactic paste containing flavoring agents, glycerine or fluorides should be avoided as they may interfere with acid etching and compromise the adhesive procedure. The next step is shade selection. So although it is not as important for posterior when compared to anterior more visible restorations, proper shade selection should be accomplished for all direct composite restorations. Use shade guides for shade selection. Different manufacturers provide their own shade guide. The shade must be selected before drying the teeth because drying makes the teeth lighter in shade due to loss of translucency, secondary to water loss from the naturally porous tooth structure. And remember that shade selection should be made quickly, that is within 30 seconds because of physiological limitations of color receptors in the eye which make it difficult to distinguish between similar colors after 30 seconds. In complex situations, a combination of shades can be used like for example here in this image you can see three different shades are being used so Y shade corresponds to the shade of the tooth in the cervical region X shade corresponds to the shade of the tooth in the middle region and W shade corresponds to the shade of the tooth in the incisal or the occlusal region which in most of the cases is lighter than the rest of the tooth the next step is isolation of the operating site Isolation for tooth colored restorations is critical and it can be accomplished with a rubber dam or an isolation device like for example isolite can be used. You need to place cotton rolls in the sulcus. Regardless of the method, isolation of the area is imperative if a successful bond is to be obtained. So it is a crucial step in composite resin restorations because contamination of the etched enamel or dentine by saliva will result in decreased bond and likewise contamination of the composite material during insertion will result in degradation of physical and mechanical properties. Now the next step is the stage of tooth preparation. So this will cover separately for anterior and posterior teeth because the cavity design is different based on different classes of caries. So first we shall take a look at the cavity preparation or tooth preparation of the anterior teeth. Firstly, we shall talk about class three restorations. Now class three caries is smooth surface caries, which is found on the proximal surfaces of anterior teeth, usually slightly gingival to the proximal contact, but it does not involve the incisal edge of the tooth. The approach for a class 3 cavity preparation may be from the facial or the lingual direction but in most of the cases we prefer a lingual approach. Why? Because facial enamel is conserved for enhanced aesthetics. 
unsupported facial enamel may be preserved which may aid in bonding of the composite resin it cannot be mandatorily used in all cases there might be some situation there wherein you need to follow a facial approach like for example if the caries is located more facially or if the teeth are irregularly aligned or if caries is extensive the cavity preparation is initiated using a number half, one or two round burr. The point of entry is located within the incisogingival dimension of the lesion or defect as and as close to the adjacent tooth as possible without contacting it. So the burr or diamond is held perpendicular to the enamel surface and an initial opening is made close to the adjacent tooth. Keep in mind that the correct angle of entry is parallel to the enamel rods on the mesolingual angle of the tooth. If the instrument is incorrectly placed and the cavity preparation is overextended, then it could lead to improper bonding of the restorative material. The same burr or diamond is used to enlarge opening for caries removal and convenience form while establishing the initial axial wall depth. Now in case of small class 3 preparations, no effort is made to prepare the walls perpendicular to the enamel surface and you may see here in this image the walls diverge externally from the axial depth resulting in a beveled marginal design which conserves the internal tooth structure. Ideally the initial axial wall preparation depth involves an incisor gingival axial wall about 0.2 mm into the dentine. In the facial lingual section, you can see the facial extension and the axial wall. They tend to follow the contour of the tooth. Larger preparations may require additional bewelding of the accessible enamel walls to enhance retention by bonding. These enamel margins are bewelled with a flame shaped or round diamond instrument. The bevel is prepared by creating a 45 degrees angle to the external surface to a depth of about 0.5 to 2 millimeters, which depends on the size of the preparation, the location of the margin, and aesthetic requirements of the restoration. So this is a cavity preparation designed for larger class 3 cavities. The arrow indicates the bevel. Now, if the remaining dentin thickness is judged to be less than 1.5 millimeters and in the deepest portions of the preparation, then in that case, you need to apply an RMGI, a resin modified glass ionomer base. Whereas, if the remaining dentin thickness is 0.5 millimeter or less, so as an indirect pulp capping agent, a calcium hydroxide liner should be placed or increasingly MTA can be used as a direct pulp capping material. If used, the calcium hydroxide or MTA liner should always be covered with an RMGI base which seals the area and prevents the etchant which will be applied later from dissolving the liner. Now let's look at class 3 caries on the root surface. So in the first image here you can see this is a mesiodistal longitudinal section showing a carious lesion in the root portion of the tooth. In the second image the tooth preparation has been done. You can still see there is some caries left in the deeper portion involving the dentine. In the third image the tooth preparation has removed the infected carious dentine as well. And you can see the design of the tooth preparation. The walls in the enamel are parallel whereas in the dentine the lesion has been scooped out and no effort has been made to keep the pulpal floor flat. In the next image you can see the retention grooves have been placed in a longitudinal section. You can see the design of the cavity preparation bevel has been placed on either side and in the next image you can see the transverse section through the tooth which illustrates the contour of the axial wall and direction of facial and lingual walls. So when restoring a large class 3 lesion or when uh, restoring a class, a class 3 in the root portion of the tooth so 
you can place retention grooves in the gingival region and retention coves in the incisal region as a part of the retention form to provide additional retention at the time of bonding. Now moving on to class 4 tooth preparation. So either we can make a conventional design, a bevelled design or a modified one. So in a con the conventional design for class 4 cavity preparation for composites, it is used in the situations such as high stress bearing areas or margins of the root surfaces. So in the first image here you can see this is a small class 4 cavity preparation. Now if a large amount of tooth structure is missing and the restoration is in a high occlusal stress area, groove retention form may be indicated even when the preparation periphery is entirely in enamel and also you need to place enamel bevels which need to be increased in width in order to provide greater surface area for etching. So in the next image you can see this is a large cavity preparation for larger class 4 lesions. If retention undercuts are deemed necessary, a gingival retention groove is prepared using a number 1-4 round burr. It is prepared about 0.2 mm inside the DEJ at a depth of about 0.25 mm. Now how do you measure this depth? You can take a number 1-4 round burr. The depth of 0.25 mm will be equal to about half the diameter of the number 1-4 round burr. So place the burr in the depth and measure the depth of the retention groove. This groove should extend the length of the gingival floor and slightly up to the facial axial and lingual axial line angles. No retentive undercut is usually needed at the incisal area where mostly enamel exists. Now next moving on to class 5 tooth preparation. So similar to class 3 and class 4 a round diamond or carbide burr is used to accomplish the initial tooth preparation which eliminates the entire enamel lesion or the defect and the preparation is extended into dentine only when the defect warrants such extension so this implies that in most of the cases class 5 is quite a superficial cavity design so in the first first two measures you can see this is how a class 5 small defect should be in outline form whereas in the second image when there is a large class 5 cavity then in that case if the carious tissue remains in the dentine then you can selectively remove it with a round burr or spoon excavator and the enamel margin is slightly beveled now in the next image you can see this is a class 5 caries involving root portion of the tooth so in class 5 tooth preparation for larger lesions or defect which extend onto the root surface the features of the preparation include a 90 degree cavo surface margin the axial wall may or may not be uniform in depth and the axial depth into the dentine is determined by the selective removal of the carious tissue the axial wall depth should extend up to about 0.75 millimeters these are the proximal view images of how a class 5 preparation on the root surface region should appear. So with this we are done with the cavity preparation for the anterior teeth involving class 3, class 4 and class 5 caries. In the next presentation we shall discuss about cavity preparation for posterior teeth and the restorative part of composite resins. I hope you have liked this presentation. Please do like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.